All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. As I said, this is a bit of a small crowd, but I think, now I know we've got Olivier here. Olivier, this is probably not going to be a lot of new content for you, but there are a few people that we don't know, which is good. We like that. And so uh, we will go ahead with the webinar as scheduled, and hopefully you'll get something interesting out of it. Um, you know, it's always hard to know what to say about a Braille display because the Braille display market right now is so crowded and many of them do the same thing. They all have, you know, they pair with multiple devices. They all have calendars and notepads and, you know, various standalone apps. And so it's kind of, you know, what differentiates one from another? And usually they do, each one of them has their own little variant, you know, that we've got the Mantis that has the full QWERTY keyboard. We have the new humanware uh, models that now have the, speaker, the audio and the Wi-Fi. Um, and then of course there's uh, the focus, which is nice and sleek and slim and has its, you know, a special relationship with JAWS and, and works very well with that. So they all kind of have their own thing. So I guess the question then of course is, well, what is our thing? Our thing is actually quite visible. Um, it is the hybrid keyboard. We have um, basically removed, well, uh, it'll be all explained in our video clips, but we've basically replaced uh, the letters and numbers with a Perkins style keyboard. And what we tried to do, you know, most of us, we grow up learning Braille, right? That's, we are born and we start learning Braille at like three years old. And that's what we know. And that's our most natural method. And then we get to, to school and we start using computers immediately. And we learn all those keyboard commands with Windows and JAWS and and the situation is changing a little bit, but at least in the Western world, it used to be that Braille display sort of came into play when you became an adult. And so what happened is you'd have these two methods and then you'd try to use the Braille display with a computer and you had all these strange commands because of course they wanted to give you your traditional Braille keyboard and they would add other function keys and you'd have all these weird combinations. They'd be different with every screen reader. And of course they're different with every Braille display display. And so what we tried to do is sort of give you the best of both worlds. We wanted to give you a situation where you could use the keystrokes that you learned with Windows or with Mac or even with VoiceOver on iOS, but we wanted to give you that intuitive Braille input and output. So this is kind of what we done. We have done in uh, the hybrid keyboard, and that's sort of where we're going to place our focus in this little presentation. So we're going to do this with a series of video clips. The first one will just be our marketing video that will introduce you to all the various functions and, and like a two minute segment. And then we will go into detail um, about the QBrill hybrid keyboard layout and then give you some practical examples of how it all works. So after we're finished, we'll come back to you and take questions. The QBrill XL. The QBraille XL represents an entirely new concept in Braille displays, offering the best of two worlds, a blind user's natural method of Braille entry and output, combined with intuitive command of your connected computers, phones, and tablets through standard QWERTY keys. The QBraille XL also gives you seven simultaneous connections, as well as several standalone applications to enhance your productivity. HIMS is known for creating Braille devices with incredible build quality, and the QBraille is no exception. With 40 high-quality Braille cells and superior craftsmanship, the QBraille is sure to become a favorite among Braille devices. With its hybrid keyboard, the QBraille XL replaces the need for specialized Braille display keystrokes, which vary by screen reader and Braille display and often require complicated finger acrobatics. Instead, QBraille offers intuitively placed function keys and modifiers found on all standard QWERTY keyboards. With the QBraille XL, closing an application in Windows simply means pressing the dedicated and familiar Alt and F4 keys. QBraille allows you to connect to six devices simultaneously via Bluetooth. Even better, you can switch among those devices plus your USB connection with a single keystroke. But there's more. In addition to all of this, QBraille includes a few extras, such as a notepad, daisy reader, calculator, alarm, stopwatch, countdown timer, and calendar. 
The CubeRail XL works seamlessly with the most popular screen readers across all platforms, including JAWS, NVDA, and Supernova for Windows, VoiceOver for Mac and iOS, Railback for Android, and ChromeVox. Unique to the CubeRail XL is your ability to use standard QWERTY commands with a Perkins keyboard, offering you the intuitive efficiency of Braille entry paired with the universal keyboard commands every computer user learns. Want to bold some text in Word? Simply press Ctrl B. Want to copy something on a Mac? Just press Command C. The CubeRail XL has a 20-hour battery life and offers convenient and plentiful storage via its SD card slot. You can use the USB Braille terminal, transfer files, or charge the unit via the USB-C port. Get the best of two worlds and maximize your productivity with the unique and innovative CubeRail XL. The most notable thing about the CubeRail XL is its unique hybrid keyboard, which allows you to create and edit text in Braille while commanding and operating your computer phone or tablet using standard QWERTY keystrokes. So we'll start by exploring that layout. So basically what we've done is to remove the letters and numbers from a standard QWERTY keyboard and replace them with a nine key Perkins style keyboard. So if we start on the same row as the space bar from left to right, we have control, function, windows, alt, space, alt, applications, and control. To the right of that, we have a normal four-way arrow pad. And above that, we have a six pack that's sort of turned on its side. So across the top, we have delete and insert. Then underneath that, we have home and end on the left and page up and page down on the right. If we go to the left of the Perkins style keyboard, we have shift, caps lock, and tab in their usual positions. And to the left of those, we have a couple of CubeRail specific keys. We have the mode key, the pairing key, and above those is the escape key in its normal position. Across the top then, we have the usual F1 through F12. So moving around to the right edge, we have the SD card slot, which we use to store notepad documents daisy books, appointments, and your CubeRail settings. In front of that, we have the USB-C port, which we use to charge the unit, transfer files via mass storage mode, and of course, to connect as the USB Braille display or keyboard. If we move to the left edge, we have only the power button, which has a dot on it as it's very flush with the unit. That will wrap up the quick tour of the unit. In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at the advantages of the hybrid keyboard. In order to do that, I'm going to connect to my PC. So the first thing I need to do from the CubeRail main menu is to go to connectivity. I'm gonna press enter and I'm given my list of connection types. The first one is USB, so I will press enter again to enter USB terminal mode. Once I'm in terminal mode, I can then connect to my PC. I already have the other end of this cable connected to the PC. And now you can hear things happening. And as I use the arrow keys, things are now happening on my PC. So I'm actually going to open this document. So I'll press enter, enter here. Opening word. Opening word. Apps list dot compatibility mode word. Resume reading. Resume reading button. Apps list dot compatibility mode. Edit. Okay. And again, I can press control to stop speech. So what I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do is to use JAWS quick keys to get to various parts of this document. Now, again, you might have to rethink how you do things um, in order to accommodate your hand position, but you don't have to rethink what those keystrokes are. And that is what the advantage of the hybrid keyboard is. I know that insert Z is my JAWS quick keys on or caps lock Z if I'm using a laptop. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to press the caps lock key and the braille letter Z. Quick keys on. And now again, I can just use the keystrokes I know. So I can type H. Heading to disclaimer. And I can move to through banking. this document. Page two, heading to books and reading. Page three, heading to camera apps for the blind. Page five, heading to file and information management. And if I want to go to the bottom of the file, I can just press space four, five, six. Page 22, bottom of file, blank. 
I could have also pressed control end as you normally might. And again, this again is the advantage of this keyboard is that it's intuitive no matter how you look at it, whether you are using braille keystrokes or whether you are using a combination, or if you want to know that strange control alt one keystroke, you don't have to think about it. It is control alt one. So let's actually go through a few examples of how that plays out. So the first thing I want to do is turn quick keys off. So I'll press caps lock Z again. Again. Quick keys off. And now I'm going to press enter a couple enter. times. Enter. And I'd like to create a new category in this document, similar to the ones that we have gone through. So in order to do that, I'm going to first type in the title. So I'll type in conferencing. And I will press enter. Conferencing. Enter. So now what I'm going to do is to arrow back up using the arrow keys, and I'm going to select it as I normally would on any QWERTY keyboard by using shift and the down arrow. Selected. Conferencing. And this should be at heading level two. So now I will just simply type control alt and the braille number two. Alt control two. And it should be now heading level two. I'll arrow down Blank. and back up. Heading level two conferencing. And voila, we do have it. Blank. Okay, so now I want my application. Before I go too much further, I guess I should explain what exactly we're doing here. This is a document of accessible apps for the Braille Sense. So I just added a new category and now I'm going to add a new application. And for those of you who can see this, you would have seen as I went through the document that the the applications are bulleted, so we'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do again is type in the title, and this will be Google Meet. So I'm going to type. Google. Okay, and I'll press enter. enter. And again, I'm going to arrow up. Google Meet. And I want to be to the left of the G. Like G and I am, Golf. and so now I'm going to create the bullet. And again, you want to rethink a little bit your hand position. Normally you're gonna type control shift L using control and shift with your left hand and L on your right. You need dots one, two, three with your left hand and doing control and shift and all of those isn't going to work very well. You still can though, you just need to use the control on the right side. So I'm going to use control on the right, shift with my left pinky and then my other three fingers typing the dots for the L. So here we go. Control shift L. Okay, and I'll arrow up. Heading level two conferencing. And back down. Level one bullet, Google Meet. And there we go. So I do have it Link. bulleted just as I would want it to be. Now, one more thing that I want to show you, and that is that you have the ability to type in contracted or uncontracted or computer braille, at least in English. And it's very easy to switch between the two. You generally want to be in computer braille if you're doing command and operation, because when you type in contracted braille, it doesn't enter anything unless you press the space bar. So the way that you switch in and out of computer braille mode is to use the mode key plus the escape key. So I can simply press. And now I'm in contracted braille and you'll see that words enter when I press space or enter. So I'm going to type a description of Google Meet, uh, just a short one. Google Meet is a conferencing app that allows you use audio and video communicate and share. Enter. And I even made some mistakes, which I would probably normally do. So... <laughs> Uh, this is real. This is real and live. It's a conferencing app that allows you to use misspelled audio and video to communicate and share files. Okay, so now I'm seeing this in contracted Braille and I typed it in contracted Braille and it translated internally and sent the words as a whole. So when you're operating, as I mentioned earlier, it's probably easier to use computer Braille so that you are able to actually use computer keystrokes, use first letter navigation, etc. However, when you're using, um, when you're typing something longer, you may choose to use contracted braille that may be more intuitive for you. And of course I can, uh, let's see, I need to fix this audio. It even underlines it for me on the braille display. Fabulous. So I have audio. I don't know what I was thinking there, but we'll just kind of try to fix that. The spell E. I know. So there we go. We fixed it. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'll press Alt F4. Microsoft Word. Save button. And again, I can just press enter. 
And we are now. Documents. Items view multi select list box. Not selected fantasy mix. Not checked. 12 slash 31 slash 2020 12 09 a.m. One file 1626 kilobytes. I was focused on nothing. And so I pressed Alt Tab to get back to uh, my file explorer list. So now let's do something else. Let's go to the web browser. So to get to my desktop again, I can press Windows D. Folder view, list view, recycle been checked, one of 23. And I want to go to Microsoft Edge. So now remember that I need to go back into computer braille. So let me press the pairing plus escape key. And we're gonna press M Microsoft Edge checked. Seven and we get to Microsoft Edge and I'll just press enter. enter. Selected about blank app bar to a bar, address and search bar edit, search okay. or enter web address. So we're actually going to visit our website and we'll look for the information on our QBrail. So I will type the address. Selected, selected, double, selected, www selected, and I've been there before. Page, enter, so selected, we'll just... www blank. Page has three regions, four headings and 17 links. Same page links. Okay, and I'm going to press control to stop speech. I want to go to the menu. So I'm going to press the tab key to move among the link links. Graphic. Open menu button. And I'll press enter here. Enter, menu, PC menu, menu, Braille, one of seven. And the Braille menu is the first one. So I'll press enter here. Enter. Leading menus, Braille, Braille menu. Page has three regions, one heading and 18 links. Right. And again, I press control. Now I'm going to type control F as I normally would in JAWS to find. Virtual find, JAWS find dialog, find what, edit combo, Braille. And uh, I've been there before too, so we'll press enter. enter. Q Braille Excel image graphic. Okay, so now we have the image and I can just arrow down to see what we've got here. Q Braille Excel, write in Braille, command via QWERTY keys. All right. More view. And we'll press enter here. Enter list with five items. Blindness slash view link. Blindness slash view link. Blindness slash view. Page has four regions, 10 headings and 19 links. Cube Braille Excel blindness, same pages. Okay, and this time I wanna to jump to the Cube Braille, so I'll use H to jump by heading. Cube Braille Excel heading level one. And here we go. And once again, I'll use my arrow keys. Cube Braille Excel placed function keys buttons. Link, for sure download. Article end, article, article. Group start product detail. Heading level to tab selected features. Heading level to tab text specs. Heading level to tab photos. So that's what we have under Cubril. As you can see, you can just use the keystrokes that you know, your arrow keys, your tab key, your control F for find. Of course, your navigation by heading is normal. Uh, but what's great about this is that all the keystrokes are the same. They're the ones you know. They're the Windows keystrokes. Whereas if you use other Braille displays, you're going to try and figure out what function key makes control or what function key makes control alt or control shift, et cetera. You're also going to have to figure out which one of those keystrokes works for which screen reader because they're often different. The function keys for a certain braille display might do different things with different screen readers. With the Q braille, it's always the same. It's always what you've learned with Windows, but you also have the intuitive ability to type in braille, to navigate in braille and to use braille letters. So does this seem rather ordinary? Yes, it does. It actually is. It's ordinary and boring, but that's actually kind of the point, that it isn't complicated. There isn't some interesting little scheme of keystrokes that you have to come up with or some interesting little scheme of function keys that they've created that are you know, supposed to be intuitive. It just is boring. It's easy. <laughs> and that is the exact point of the hybrid keyboard. So we hope that this makes more more sense to you and that you come to appreciate it as we have done. All right, so that wraps up the video portion of things. Um, as always, you can contact us for more information at our email address, hymns at selvashc.com, or visit our website to find out more about our products. And the cube rail is kind of simple. We can say the same things over and over. The hybrid keyboard is awesome, right? That's the main point of, of tonight. The hybrid keyboard is awesome. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to belabor that point anymore because we already said it like 15 times. So um, <laughs> we will now open it up for questions if you have them or comments. Um, we appreciate you joining us for this little webinar at Site City. We hope you guys are enjoying the conference. <laughs>